Welcome back. Amy and I are still here, and we've got some books to talk about. Yes, I brought some like recommended reading just for anybody that's really interested in this subject. So I brought one that's for my grown-ups first. Mm -hmm. This one's called Picking Up by Robin Nagel. Uh -huh. This was really interesting because it follows the New York Sanitation Department. Okay. They're one of the oldest, like, truly starts of the sanitation industry in America. And mm -hmm. the amount, you think about how big New York City is, they're dealing with so much trash all the time. Tons of litter. You know, if you look, you watch the New Year's Day ball drop, mm -hmm. watch them clean after. It's crazy oh, to yeah. see. And it's really neat how, like, streamlined they've made it. And it mm -hmm. really goes into, like, the stories of the workers. And so it's, if you're interested in the kind of facts of it and how things really work and you know, behind the scenes especially, this one's a great book. And it lets you get kind of a little insight into like what it's like day to day to work it. Mm -hmm. So this is a really great one for my adults. And then I brought okay. two for kiddos. So just for an informative one, this one is very, has a very simple title, Trash. Trash. If you're curious about <laughs> what it's about, it's about trash. Yes. Um, but this one's really great. It's mostly pictures. It's by Charlotte Wilcox. It's not got any illustrations. It's got like real pictures, but especially if you've got any kids that love like equipment mm -hmm. and big trucks, this is, gives you some real like looks at like what a landfill actually looks like. You know how they do the the fills and how they decide the layers and how everything works and you know the garbage tipping out, what it all really looks like. And so if you don't get a chance to actually go to a facility and show them, this is a great mm -hmm. like second alternative to that. And then the last one is mostly just a very cute story for kids. So this one is actually written by a guy that worked on a landfill. And one day he found Dougal, and he was a little stuffed bear, and he just thought he was so cute and sad Aww. that he was going in the landfill. So he plucked him out and cleaned him up and then kept him. And he took pictures of with him everywhere. So he oh, Dougal the story. Yes, yeah. Aww. This is and written by a, like a real waste worker. Mm -hmm. And so then he goes and he takes like pictures with Dougal. And he starts to, like, go and get other stuffed animals that people have thrown away that he cleans up and saves. And then kids can come and visit him. And so he shows oh. Dougal all, all of these places in the landfill. It's very, very cute. And it's cute, too, because it, like, shows the kind of lighthearted side of working in the waste mm -hmm. industry. So I really like this one, too. This is a good one. But I bought three for kind of three different types of books to kind of look into, get a different side of, like, what that looks like. So you can really see. Sometimes it's hard when I talk about it to really picture it. You know, we're dealing with 800 tons of garbage in Whitfield County every day. That's really hard that to, like, crazy. conceptualize. It's like 250 to 300 garbage trucks. So if you think about how big a garbage truck is, and then stack 300 on top of oh each gosh. other. Gosh, and it makes you wonder, it makes me wonder, where is all of this going? That is a long process. <laughs> so the things have really changed since 95. Um, we have what's called now a subtitle D new lined landfill. So there's lots of layers to it, which basically filters out what we call leachate, which is garbage juice, mm -hmm. um, and then sends it to, it to Dalton Utilities here, which is treated like industrial wastewater. And then the trash basically gets packed into this sort of plastic wrapped burrito to make sure that there's no like leakage into the groundwater. We're not gonna like have trash popping up out of the ground years and years later. Mm -hmm. And then we vacuum out the, the methane. So we'll monitor that for 30 years. You can never put buildings or trees on top of it. They really, there's a couple of people trying to figure out how to do that, but we haven't quite broken that code yet. Yeah. Um, and so, but then after that 30 years, sometimes people turn it into like golf courses or um, like disc golf parks, but they're okay. huge hills. They reach like 250 feet tall. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> very, very big. And that's one of the reasons it's kind of dangerous is you're dealing with all of that, all those garbage trucks coming in and out and these like tall, tall areas, you know, you want to make sure you don't fall off or mm -hmm. anything like that. <laughs> I think it's fascinating, really, it is because most of the time we throw our garbage away, we take it or it gets picked up and then that's it. But it's really not it. It's just the beginning of what all is going on. That's true. It really is the beginning. And then on the recycling side, if you do recycle, instead of going to somewhere like the landfill, you take it and it goes through a very long process to be turned into something new. So it's got to come to us get sorted, then get baled. So we basically, if you've seen a hay bale, it's mm -hmm. like that, but it's full of like plastic or paper, depending on what the thing is. And then it goes through a long process, depending on what it is, to get turned into something, which was very important during the pandemic because there were all of these shortages on like boxes and toilet paper, which is made from oh, recycled yes. paper. <laughs> yes. So they were really, really important to like getting those things back on the grocery store, so store shelves back on that year. Right. So one thing I love when I'm, I'm seeing your Facebook posts and stuff is that you're getting a lot of kids and students involved in the whole process and, and um, 
I guess, being enlightened about how this works and what needs to be done. Yeah, so I see about 5,000 kids a year. It's really, really important for them to understand that garbage doesn't just go away. That, and, and also there's an industry there. There's some really cool things on the recycling side in robotics if they're interested. Mm -hmm. On, you know, I do marketing and graphic mm -hmm. design and education. We've got guys, if you've like, you know, equipment, we've got heavy equipment operators and drivers and everything. So mm -hmm. we've got a whole lot of jobs that kids don't necessarily know about, like yeah. automatically. So it's mm -hmm. kind of cool to like get to teach that side of things. And they I get really cool. excited about it, <laughs> surprisingly. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really awesome. And listen, one of my favorite books growing up was Lion is Down in the Dumps. We'll talk about that another I'll have day. To, I'll have to read that, have to one look at that one now. It's old. It's from the 70s. but you, That's okay. It's cool. <laughs> um, so, Amy, if people want to get involved, what do they need to do? So, the best thing to do is find us on social media. We'll be doing a whole big push next week. So, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. It's Recycling Ben, but B-E-N, because mm -hmm. that's our mascot. So, you just look up Recycling Ben, find us on Facebook, social media. I'll be doing some story times, showing some of our workers, and some really fun stuff there. Well, this is cool. Very interesting. Thank you for coming out, Amy. Thank you for inviting me and getting to talk about all this fun stuff. <laughs> well, we'll have you back for sure. And the rest of you, I'll be back in a minute. He's a little bit of you. He's a little bit of me. He's a the roads out of Tennessee. He's the garbage that we find. He's a dream we left behind. Oh, there ain't no lower class than Tennessee trash. Much to a traveling man, but a little bit of litter goes a long, long way. Growing and a growing, getting bigger every day. Tennessee trash messing up the highways. Tennessee trash junking up the byways. There ain't no lower class than Tennessee trash. No, there ain't no lower class. So what is paranormal activity? Is it different from a haunting? Are there different kinds of ghosts? Are all ghosts mean and nasty? These are but some of the many issues explored in an eye-opening paranormal workshop set to take place on Saturday, June 26th at the B Creative Center located at 2709 Airport Road, Suite 104 at the MedNow Center in Dalton, Georgia. This workshop will include three speakers, lunch, and an optional paranormal investigation. Have you ever heard strange sounds in the night even though you're home alone? Have you smelled pipe tobacco in an empty room but no one you know smokes pipe? Do doors slam by themselves when there's no wind or even a breeze? Are there logical explanations or are you being visited by something otherworldly? If so, you might be living in a haunted house. That's what this workshop is all about, haunted houses. Whether you think you live in one or the topic just interests you, or maybe you want to get into paranormal investigations. Whatever the case, this workshop has something for all paranormal enthusiasts. You'll start out with an hour lecture on infamous haunted houses with me, followed by two more hours with Bob Honeycutt, founder of the Georgia Ghost Society, and Jennifer Spear of the Atlanta Ghost Girls. You'll learn signs that a house may be haunted, a brief history of ghosts, how to gather proof of a haunting, the importance of research, when, where, and how to get help, and answers to frequently asked questions about the paranormal world. Full of fascinating stories, practical information, and wisdom that comes from decades of ghost hunting, our So You Think Your House Is Haunted workshop will give you the tools you need to deal with anything you might encounter. Space is limited, so reserve your spot by calling 706-809-0518. The cost is $50 per person for a five-hour workshop experience, lunch, and an optional nighttime investigation. Learn more on the Dalton Ghost Tours Facebook page or the B Facebook page, that's Bohemian Entertainment, on Facebook. And on another haunted note, this Saturday in Dalton, Georgia, Dalton Ghost Tours is offering a free 90-minute ghost walk for all fathers at 8 p.m. in honor of Father's Day. While daddies get in free, all others can purchase tickets for $15 or $10 for children under 12. Learn more on the Dalton Ghost Tours Facebook page. Advanced tickets are not necessary, just show up a few minutes early. Start point is the wooden deck across, from the, across the street from the Wink Theater on West Crawford Street in historic downtown Dalton. Hope to see you there. In the meantime, please visit the Talk with Connie on Facebook and on YouTube. While you're there, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching today. God bless you and see you next.